For this video, I am going to review a device for your workbench that you cannot buy, but you could build one or design your own. I am showing off the Pico EuroCard. It's a dev board for the Pi Pico designed by Shabazz on the Element 14 community. We'll look at its unique features, the things that I really like, and talk about why you might use a board like this one. My name is James and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. Let's go review. For the Pico, I prefer programming via the C SDK in VS Code or with the Arduino library. One way to load a compiled binary is to press the boot select button, cycle the USB connection, and then drag and drop the UF2 file. Another way is to use the 3-pin SWD interface on the edge of the Pico and middle of the Pico W. On a board I designed, I came up with a keycap footprint that allows me to connect either header to a small 10-pin connector. That way, I can use it with a Seeger J-Link Mini. However, Shabazz's approach is so much more elegant. By using right angled pin headers, you can connect either header to the Eurocard. And while there is a dedicated header for easy access to those debug signals, it is not really necessary. A firmware called PicoTool turns a second RP2040 into a compatible programmer for the SWD interface. In this case, Shabazz adapted the firmware for the Seed Studio RP2040 shell. I used the castellated pads to solder mine directly to the Eurocard. Now I can connect by USB and then program the Pi Pico directly from VS Code. Not only is this easier than the UF2 method, but I can also use breakpoints to modify variables and debug the code. The Xiao is a really nice option for having a dedicated programmer in any RP2040 application. They do cost a little more than a standard Pico, but they are much more compact. There is a link in the show notes to the version of Pico tool that Shabazz made. Okay, now let's explore how you can power your projects using the Eurocard. There are multiple ways to power the Pi Pico and additional circuits. The easiest is using the Shao's USB-C to provide power. Alternative power sources are directly on the pin headers or the barrel jack or the screw terminal. Even after attaching some mini grabbers and turning on a bench supply, nothing is happening. And that's because there are places for regulators, which we still have to add. Instead of a linear regulator, I had wanted to try these drop-in replacements, which are switching regulators. However, they blocked the spot for the bulk decoupling capacitor. So I decided to use a modern 7805 for the 5 volt rail, and then added an electrolytic capacitor for its bulk decoupling. And now this row of pins has the input voltage, the regulated 5 volts, and 3.3 volts, or it would if I had a 3 volt regulator. Fortunately, these headers decide whether those rails are connected to the Pi Pico or the regulators. Now the 3.3 volt rail comes from the Pico's regulator. Having connections like these give a board like this a lot of flexibility in how things get powered. Two things to think about if you design your own dev board. First, consider adding a polyfuse anytime you have a barrel jack. And second, I personally like to have additional LEDs near the regulators just so I know if they're doing okay. Almost half of the board is dominated by a prototyping area. On the back, you can see a grid of solderable pads you could use to build up a semi-permanent circuit. And here is something Shabazz did that I think is brilliant. You see, when I make prototyping areas, I normally use plated through holes with pads on the top and bottom. But the Eurocard only has pads on the back. There are no copper through holes, which means changing or removing components is going to be much easier because there is much less solder to deal with. Something else to notice on the backside is that all of the pins with functions are clearly identified. Remember, silkscreen is pretty much free, and the few extra minutes it takes to add it almost always pays off. Another feature I really like are these SOIC compatible breakout pads. They save the need for a standalone breakout board. Now looking at the Pico's GPIO pins, these are broken out to these headers, which make it really easy to add DuPont wires, or as I like to call them, Arduino sticks. It's a joke I saw on the internet once, and it just kind of stuck. This area of pins is a little counterintuitive, at least to me. It consolidates the GPIOs into a group. The even rows are labeled, but what threw me off is that around row 16, it's not actually GPIO 16, it's GPIO 15 next to 16. And then on row 15 is GPIO 14 and 17, and so on. In fairness, these rows and columns are probably explained in the documentation that he sent me, but I already lost it. If only there was a website I could go to to download it from, hmm. What really makes development boards like the Pico Eurocard such a great idea is the built-in frequently used stuff. 
For example, this design has a micro SD card socket, a user push button, an LED, and a rotary encoder. While the PCB is wired to specific GPIOs, there are headers to disconnect or redirect them with Arduino sticks. Also, there is this button labeled Reset. I'm so glad that Shabazz included one. I just wish reset buttons had been invented before Raspberry Pi made the Pico. Then maybe it would have one too. Overall, I think Shabazz did a fantastic job and I am so grateful that he sent me one. Now, the Euro card is not a product and it's not really something that you can buy. However, you can get the latest design files from GitHub and you can ask Shabazz questions over on the Element 14 community. Personally, my favorite feature is the Shell Programmer interface. It makes developing code so much easier. But what is your favorite part? Let me and Shabazz know over on the Element 14 community. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to writing code, which is my least favorite activity, while doing my most favorite activity, which is poking around at hardware on my electronics workbench.